PSVR 2. So today, guys, we are going to be talking about the PSVR 2 or the PlayStation VR 2, to be more precise in what it's now fully been announced as to what it's going to be called. Um, I want to talk today a couple of things like we all have probably heard the news by this point about it being out. We've probably all heard the specs of everything, but we're going to still go through all of that stuff anyway. And I also want to wrap this up with talking about why I think that um, the PlayStation VR 2 is going to actually change up the industry and it's going to be the uh, the shaker that we need actually right now in virtual reality. Um, so yeah, stick around for that part. We're going to initially begin just by talking about what the headset is and what we know about the headset. So going over the specs of the PS VR 2 and I'm going to explain what some of these things mean as we go through as well so that if you feel a bit lost about what any of these things mean, I will help you out and help you understand. So let's go over the specs, shall we? The display method is going to be OLED screens, which means we're going to get the truest blacks basically. So it's going to give us back kind of what we lost with the Quest 2, which is the really true deep blacks when we're in there, giving us essentially the best looking image we can possibly have. Um, don't get me wrong, what goes on with the Quest, I personally don't have a big deal with it, but having that proper natural blacks back into it is going to really, really help sell the image and make it look even better, in my opinion. We're going to have a resolution of 2000 by 2040 per eye which essentially means we've got like a 4k image 2k per eye um which is plenty enough it puts it just slightly above what the quest is currently right now and in all honesty that's a really good kind of sweet spot to be in panel refresh rate is going to be between 90 and 120 hertz which is pretty standard to be honest with you across most headsets in this day and age so i'm not too worried about that it's pretty decent obviously it's going to fluctuate between that 90 and 120 depending on how the uh depending on the game and how demanding of a game it's going to be but yeah 120 pretty decent i'm not going to complain about that now we haven't had a bust in amount of information about how the IPD is going to work in this game. If you're wondering what IPD is, essentially the distance between your pupils, um, which is how you basically focus out the lenses to get the best image possible catered to you. Uh, on the Quest 2, it's handled by like three settings, so you can be like in one, two or three. Um, on the old PlayStation VR, it used to be done by the camera, so that you'd look at the camera and it would take a picture of you um, and it would work out the distance of your eyeballs. Yep, your eyeballs? Nope. The distance of your pupils and um, then from that it would then manually adjust it within the headset um so i'm actually not sure what they're going to be doing with this from what they're saying it's going to be an adjustable slider so i feel like it's probably going to be either something similar to like the old quest where you actually had a manual slider at the bottom where you could set it to what you wanted it to be um or possibly it could even be something like the quest 2 with the clicking setting I personally hope that it's something like the Quest 1 had, like I say, with the slider at the bottom where you could go from X to Y. Um, that'd be pretty sick if that is the case. That would honestly be my ideal scenario for this. Field of view is 110 degrees. I'm not entirely sure what that means because uh, are they talking about 110 degrees just this way or are they talking about, you know, how, how, I'm not sure how they're actually measuring that. Um, but I'm interested to find out a little bit more on it. Uh, it's going to have four cameras on it for inside out tracking. Oh my God, thank you. That's really freaking good news, which means we're going to have full freedom just like you do in your quest. And, um, you know, the range for in the quest is actually pretty freaking decent. You know, you can, you can be everywhere and not lose tracking. So I'm very confident that that's a great route. Um, originally on a PSVR one, oh my God, you used to have to do it through the lighthouse tracking and it, the, the light tracking and it was just so bad <laughs> it was so bad it did it did the job but it was bad we're also going to have haptic feedback built into the headset there is a single motor in the headset which is apparently going to give us haptic feedback in our head again i don't know how that's going to work whether it will be entirely around the band as well or whether it's going to be entirely focused on just the face part of it uh, all of those types of questions we're going to have to get answered as we get closer to its release and actually get the truest information that we can out of this thing but for now to know that there's going to be haptic built into it I am really excited about that. And um, there's also going to be eye tracking built into the headset as well, which is really exciting. And honestly, it's so nice to see a commercial headset that is going to have this built into it. I want this to become a new normal. Um, if you're wondering to yourself like, well, what benefit does it have to have eye tracking in there? We're talking about the fact that two two prong effect essentially to having the eye tracking built into it number one is the way that it's going to foveate rendering which basically means where you're looking is where it's going to focus all of its rendering power to make that part of the image look as nice as possible so wherever you're looking it will make sure that part of the image is rendered out to the absolute max and um, it won't waste any sort of computing power on bits that you're not looking at so 
kind of similar to how your actual eyeballs work. You're you're not always focusing on everything that's in your prefer you know in your peripheral vision. You're you're literally looking at your your area, and that is the part that your eye is essentially rendering out of the highest quality. You know, which is why you kind of get like that natural sort of Gaussian blur that comes away from everything. Um, so it's going to work in a similar way to that, which means it's going to be able to push the power even harder because it's going to, you know, going to be able to do that with the eye tracking. Uh, again, I really want this to become a new normal. Imagine this in like a Quest 3. Oh my God, they'd be able to push even more power out of the thing. So um, let's hope that that becomes a new normal. Obviously, the other part of eye tracking is the fact that when you're in games, when you're looking at menus, naturally, you are going to be looking at the things you want. You can be able to select them and know what you're selecting with your eyes over having to physically move it with a joystick and stuff like that, which could be really, really sick. Uh, there's a million and one different use cases they can do with eye tracking. And trust me when I say all of them are exciting and I think it could be something really special. Um, and then on top of that, again, you then have the social aspect, uh, aspect of VR, which means if you're in a social platform or maybe even in any game, depending on how they develop it, um, having your actual eye movement in real game, in real time, is gonna be really nice. To be able to talk to someone and tell that they're looking directly at you is gonna be like, it's going to be special you know it's like a, it's a, as humans this is how we talk you know we want to look into each other's eyes and we want to have that conversation and to actually have that it's going to be something really special i think uh, again i really want this to become a new normal across all headsets um, for connection to the PS5, it is going to be a single cord USB-C cable straight into the front of the PS5. And um, yeah, I don't have a problem with this at all. I'm guessing the reason they're doing this is because it's going to be for the high bandwidth so that you can get like the best looking thing on the screen. Um, the headset won't have to have a battery in it, so it's going to be a little bit lighter. And all in all, I have literally no issue with this. As I said sort of like way back at the beginning of this video, we, um, I, I personally use a link cable when I'm recording with my Quest 2 anyway if it's not natively quest footage um so i'm kind of used to it plus i've been playing pc vr for years at this point so having a single cable is actually really not that bad um and plus there's no breakout box or anything like that originally used to have to have this massive box uh, i have mine like set up over there on the side a massive box that had wires that went to here went to there then you had to plug two more cables into the front of that thing like two hdmi cables and have a massive chungus wire hanging off of you um, so having just a single USB cable is going to be pretty easy. Hopefully they make it nice and flexible and hopefully they give us plenty of length on that thing. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not fussed about that. I'm not really entirely sure why everyone's making a big deal out of it. Uh, I do kind of get that if you're a Quest 2 user and you've had the freedom of not having any cables ever, why you might feel the way, um, that some people are about it. Like, oh, I don't want to be tethered anymore. I don't want to be tethered. I don't, that's not an experience I want. But... The thing is, and the single biggest sort of complaint I ever hear about the Quest is the graphics capability of it. Um, obviously with the Quest, you're always going to be held back with the mobile processors and stuff like that. It's, it's always going to be a problem for mobile headsets like the Quest 2. Uh, you're never going to get the fidelity that you can do on like PC VR or potentially what we might see on PS uh, VR 2. So, you know, this is a trade-off. You're going to have really high-end graphics and you know, it's a single cable. Once you're in there, and if it's lightweight enough, you're not even gonna remember that you've got it there. Um, I, I'm not really concerned about it personally. I don't think you should be either. I know you can maybe see it as a negative, but really don't view this one as a negative. It's also gonna have a built-in microphone, which I'm hoping being Sony, it will be a good microphone. Let's just hope it's not as bad as the ones in the controllers. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> hopefully it's gonna be decent and it is there at the end of the day. Because um, personally, I quite like the Quest 2 microphone. I think it's got a really decent microphone in that for when you're doing and online chat and stuff so let's kind of hope that we get something that's on par at least with that that gives us a good enough audio quality to actually um, enjoy talking to people in games and the final thing to talk about this is it doesn't seem to have any built-in audio the only audio it's going to have is a jack in the side and that means that you're essentially going to have to plug in your own headphones i would also imagine if you own like a pair of these so the playstation official um 3d audio ones headphones um, <laughs> um but if you own a pair of these i'd imagine that these will work with it because you do it off the bluetooth anyway and if you've only got a single cable going into the playstation i uh, kind of see no reason for why this wouldn't be the solution that they will go with so you know you're not going to have an additional cable hanging out your head i'd imagine you'd go with something like this unless you have a preferred set of headphones that you want to go with now when it comes to the controllers we have a very similar sort of you know the regular playstation layout of buttons of what you're already expecting um they have the capacitive touch which essentially means the same as your quest um so when you have your finger near the actual item itself as soon as you go anywhere near it it can tell that you're going to go there it can tell that you're thinking about depressing it 
because it can sense your fingers. And then when you actually go to do it, it can help with actually, again, knowing that's gonna happen and it can help you gesture your hand. Um, it can lead you then to be able to do things like grip there and point and it knows that your finger isn't near the trigger so it'll be able to like in-game point your finger and it gives you that little bit of gesture with your thumb, your index finger and your grabby finger, otherwise known as your middle finger. They're also gonna have their um, they're also gonna have their special triggers that they have on these controllers as well, which basically means like when you're in something like COD, different weapons have different, like literally different trigger pulls on them. So it can change and adapt to whatever kind of weapon you're using, which is gonna be so amazing and immersive. To have that in VR, it's gonna become the new normal, I pray, because honestly, like other VR developers could really take a note out of their book for this. Um, of course, they're gonna be sensed in a very similar way to the way that like Quest controllers are now. They look really nice. I'm kind of excited to be using them. Um, I'm really excited to see what these are like. Uh, and yeah, I think the controllers are gonna be pretty bitching. Right, to wrap this video up, I do wanna just talk about a few things. Um, We've covered a lot of bases as I've gone through things like don't worry about the cable, but you know, obviously this is all personal preference things. Um, and what I did want to talk about is why I think that the PSVR 2 is going to really shake up the industry and why it's going to bring a change to us that we need right now. Um, now, listen, I've been an avid PC VR user for many, many years at this point, like I don't know, three or four years, I've been really solidly into PC VR. Um, the Quest came along, I didn't even buy into the original Quest 1 until quite late in its life cycle because I was kind of like, I don't want something that's um, mobile VR because I didn't want to have that low fidelity graphics. And at that point, when that very first launched, um, I was looking at it, looking not down my nose at it, but looking at it in a way like, I don't want to spend that kind of money to have that device and sort of not be wowed by it, you know? Um, as it turns out, obviously the Quest really took off and it kind of dominated the market a little bit to start with and developers started moving away from developing for PC VR and started moving more into developing for Quest because where the money is, I don't blame any developer doing that because they're putting a hard time into making something, of course they want to be able to make money back off of it. Um, then the Quest 2 came out and it really started to dominate things. Um, now I did buy a Quest 1 towards the end of its life cycle, literally about two months before the Quest 2 dropped, which really was heartbreaking. Um, and I bought into the Quest 2 literally the second it was announced um, and I bought it straight away. The second it was announced, I was on a website, I bought it. Because I, at that point I was like, I see the potential in why this thing exists and why it's so cool. Um, ever since then with my Quest 2, I've really loved the thing. Um, I've grown to love it even more over the last sort of six months as well for content creation. I've been just really getting into it. And plus again, it's where all the games are right now, you know, it's where you can go and enjoy all the experiences. So, so I've just been loving the Quest. Now you're probably thinking to yourself like, why are you talking about Quest so much? Well, the reason I'm talking about that part of stuff is because I want you to have an understanding of what my thinking pattern is on, on this situation, right? Now at the moment, that's dominating, okay? PC VR is still there, it's prominent. You know, there are there is tons of hardware being made that is stupidly high end. Uh, and you also need a super high-end PC to be able to run all that stuff, right? So you're talking about a down payment of being able to having to put down thousands to get into that situation. But the problem is, is you have all of that and you have all of that money you've invested in it and then there's no experiences to play anymore. You're either busy playing older experiences or the once in a blue moon experiences that come out. Because again, sadly, they're just not being developed for anymore, which, which sucks. But this is where the PlayStation VR 2 comes in. Now, this system... <laughs> what's going to make it special is not just the headset itself the headset is cool and it's 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 really cool but it's not just that that makes this amazing for me the fact of the matter is with it coming out and with the power of the playstation 5 we're now going to be able to have these high-end experiences triple a vr games being made um and with triple a vr games getting made that means more money is going into the industry, more developers are going to come in, more massive developers are going to start developing for the PlayStation VR 2. It's what's going to happen, this is how it's going to roll out. What's special about this is the controller layout is super similar to something like an Index or the Oculus Quest controller, which means these games are going to be portable. They will start coming across to PC VR as well, which means the high-end VR range of things is going to start popping off again, which means if you are a PC VR user and you, you want to be diehard about it and you don't want to get into PS VR 2, screw that thing, I don't want to be that, I don't want to have, I don't want a bloody PlayStation 5, fine. But what you do need to understand is that 
by this happening, it is going to make a knock-on effect across the industry, which means then the PC VR stuff is going to pick up again because people are going to want that high-end experience. And again, these games are going to be very portable to come across to, uh, to PC. <clears throat> so basically, this is just like a win-win situation. It's going to bring in what we want to happen. So for me, this is like, like I say, it's going to shake up the industry. If they can get the price pointing on this correct, if they can get the supply correct, then this is gonna sell really well. And in doing so, it's gonna make them make games. And this is freaking good news. Because finally, we're gonna have content to go with hardware. For so long at this point, all we get told about is bloody hardware. Hardware's coming out, hardware's coming out. Look at this new headset, it's 54K. Well, that's exciting, but what am I gonna use it on? <laughs> <laughs> is my question I'm often asking and not just that but from a content creator's point of view and I know other content creators feel the same way as this we don't care about seeing just new hardware all the time we want to see what content is coming out for that hardware um but yeah I'm super excited about this I think it's going to be something absolutely phenomenal and I think it's just going to trickle feed the whole industry and make it even better in the same way that the Quest has made the industry better in a lot of ways because it's got tons of new people into VR, this is gonna do a very similar thing. Now, if you're into VR and you love it and you're an enthusiast and you're deep in this world of virtual reality in the same way like I am and so many others are, then just get it, man. Like, this is gonna be good for us, okay? It's just gonna be a good move and it's gonna really make that AAA VR experience come back. And it's something we've been lacking and something we've been wanting for so long. And honestly, so little has come out, really, that has given us that AAA experience. Um, we've come close to it, we've exceeded it even with things like Half-Life Alex. but we still don't get a frequency of games coming out that give us that experience. And I feel like this is gonna be that first step in the right direction towards us actually getting that sort of stuff. So that's my little rant of why I kind of think this is gonna be good for the industry as a whole. I'm talking about all of VR, you know, because don't forget if this does well, what's, what's, what's Oculus gonna do? What are they gonna do? They're gonna make moves. The Oculus Quest 3 might be bitching. It may be so powerful, it can do what some of these things are doing. And good, I welcome it. I want that to be the case. And perhaps that will kind of be the kick up the butt that they need. And what you have to understand is right now, there is no competition for the Quest 2. There's no competition. There may be other sort of, um, you know, other headsets being produced that are similar to it, but there really isn't a competition to it because Oculus Quest doesn't just have the hardware, but it has the store. And the store is the part that so many other things are missing, you know? So they have no competition. What's the point in innovating to the next level if they don't need to, you know? So having something else coming in and fighting the battle with them is going to mean that it's going to push them to really play their hand. And I think that it's going to be a good thing. Because like I say, Quest 3, when that one day happens, I don't know whether it will be this year or next, whenever that happens, that is going to push them to develop it even harder. Um, when it comes to Steam VR and PC VR and all that sort of stuff in general, it means that that kind of hardware is going to finally excel. I mean, all of the quality hardware is already there for that stuff. Uh, all of the graphics cards, are already, they already exist for all of that stuff. All it needs is the games to go with it. And again, they're going to trickle feed down. So this is going to be big for all of the VR industry, whether you are a mobile VR user, a PC VR user, or a PlayStation 1 VR user, or PSVR 1, should I say, user, this is going to be big for you. Um, it's going to be big for all of us. I'm really excited. It's an exciting time to be out in this. Other than that, guys, smash like, subscribe, bell icon, all that gumph. And uh, nothing else to say, really, other than enjoy your day and uh, roll outro.